So today we're going to be installing the fan relay along with the adjustable thermostat for a set of electric fans that I have. This particular kit's made by Meridyne High Performance Fans. The part number is MFA100. This is a non-invasive kit, which means you don't have to do anything to your existing wiring. As long as you know how to set up power and ground, the rest should be pretty easy for you to do. This kit comes with a relay harness. It also comes with a fuse holder. It has the mounting bracket for the adjustable thermostat. It's got the little sensing bulb and it's got a little baggie of hardware. The way this thing works is that after you get this mounted up on your core support or firewall, you're supposed to take this bulb and put it into the radiator. Once this thing senses the radiator temperature reach a certain temperature, this thing's going to send the signal to this little box right here. And this thermostat box is going to close these two connections and either apply power or ground to the circuit. Let's go ahead and start mocking this up in the car and see what it looks like. Okay, before I get too excited, I should probably tell you guys how this system actually works. So we got ourselves a capillary thermostat switch. So how this works is that there's a fluid inside and as heat is applied to the sensing bulb, it'll increase the pressure inside the line. Once the pressure exceeds a certain amount, it'll trip the internal switch. Once it cools down, it'll close the internal switch. So if you guys break this line or you kink this line, you could render the whole system useless. All right, so going through the instructions first, it says that the bulb is normally inserted into the radiator fins on the inlet side of the radiator. So let's go ahead and set that up first and then see where we can place the rest of the switch. All right, so this is where I decided to put it. We've got the inlet side of the radiator right here, and then we've got the sensing bulb right here in the fins. We've got the wire that connects the sensing bulb to the thermostat unit. I have it running across next to this wiring harness. Then it goes into this hole that somebody drilled out. And then I've got the rest coiled up here. And then I've got the thermostat itself right next to the fender. So when you're looking at the engine this way, pardon for the mess, it's not quite finished yet. But when you're looking at the engine here, you actually won't see the thermostat unless you actually go in, look for it. And then even then it'll only look like a zinc coated bracket. And then if I ever have to adjust the thermostat, there was already an existing hole that I actually made a little bit bigger and then you can see the adjustment right there just with the long screwdriver and you'll be able to adjust it no problem. A couple things to note about this wire is that it's not supposed to be touching any kind of metal or edges because with the vibrations of the vehicle it's actually going to wear into the wire and eventually it'll destroy the wire so we're going to go ahead and wrap it with something to keep it from getting absolutely destroyed with the vibrations. But before we do that we're going to go ahead and move on to the wiring and we're going to be installing the relay harness along with the thermostat and I'll show you guys how we're going to be doing that. All right, so now we're going to be moving on to the electrical side of things. I misplaced the instructions that we were looking at earlier, so I decided to go ahead and draw my own. So the way that it's set up from the factory is that you have the battery that goes into a fuse. That fuse goes ahead and feeds the heavy side of the relay. Then you also have a red-orange wire that's supposed to go from the ignition or an ignition source, and that's supposed to feed the coil side of the wire. Then on the back side of the power side of the relay, you're going to close the circuit when the relay is energized. The relay is energized when the thermostat closes the circuit and applies the ground to the relay. When the relay is then ground, the switch is gonna close. When that switch is closed, it's gonna transfer power from this red wire going in go through the switch and then it's gonna leave through this blue and black wire, which is right here actually, on the harness and that's gonna go to the fan itself. At the fan, you're gonna have the blue and black wire going in and the one that's leaving is going to be a black wire by itself. So this harness is set up to be used a specific way and we're gonna go through it. The first thing is that there are two schools of thought of how to energize this relay. The way the instructions say is that you can run it off an ignition source and that's going to apply power. So when you turn on your ignition switch, the relay is going to be powered, but it won't be energized until the thermostat grounds it out. The way that I would like to do it is that I would take the red orange wire and connect it to the red wire on the battery side. So you have fuse holder and this fuse holder is supposed to protect your circuit. It's got a nice little cap and a weather insulated grommet right here. 
and you have this uh, ring terminal that's supposed to go to the battery. The other side is supposed to go to the power side of the relay. What I would do is that on the side that's supposed to go to the relay, I would actually splice in this red and orange wire, which actually says ignition battery plus ignition. Instead of it running to your ignition switch, it would be hot and it would be a protected circuit all the time. And the reason I would like to do that is if your engine is running really hot, when you turn the ignition switch off, it's going to turn off the fans. And so the heat soak of the motor is going to continue to soak throughout the motor. For anybody running a carbureted vehicle, you know that you get vapor lock if the engine is running too hot. It's going to dump fuel into the motor. And because of that, you're going to have a very hard time starting it back up if it gets to the point where it fouls out the plugs. So when you tie it into the red wire, because it's hot all the time, even if you turn off the ignition switch, the fan is going to continue to run until the radiator has cooled to the temperature that it needs to cool down. Some people are worried that the fans will wipe out the battery in the time, 5-10 minutes that they stay on after the key's been turned off. When you come back from, let's say you go to a store, you come back, the battery is completely drained, and now you can't start up the car that way. If your battery cannot support the time that the fan is on after you turn the ignition off, you would either need to upgrade the battery size or you're going to want to run this to the ignitions just like the instructions say. When I think of the health of the motor, I'd much rather have it set up like this. You have to remember that the thermostat is actually the trigger of whether or not the fan turns on. So depending on how you have it set up, you can have a tolerance for it where that it can support a certain amount of temperature before it actually kicks on. And it'll keep the engine a lot warmer, but it's also less likely that you're going to overdraw from the battery. So the way we have it set up here is that your red, orange, and red come from the same fuse source. You have power to the relay all the time. You have power to the relay switch all the time. You don't have power to the fan until this closes. Once the ground side is triggered by the thermostat, the relay will then close. Power will be sent to the fan, and then your fan will turn on. There is another circuit that's included with this relay harness. And if you guys look here, you have the ground wire that's supposed to go for the ground side of the relay. If you follow that up, there's actually a spliced connection. And then it actually has two sets of grounds. One of these is for the thermostat and the other one is for a AC pressure switch. So what it'll do is that instead of having one available trigger, it's going to have two. So instead of it only relying on the thermostat, if you have an AC system, what will happen is that you have a splice point here and now you have a pressure switch that when your AC system is kicked on, it'll actually close the circuit going to the ground side of the relay. So now when your AC system gets kicked on, the fan will immediately turn on anyway. If you turn your engine off and the engine is still hot, the thermostat will then kick on the relay and then the thermostat will turn it off when it needs to. So the reason for the AC pressure switch is that because you're running an AC system, you need to make sure that condenser is cool, you have a lot of airflow to it, so they can't rely solely on the thermostat to cool down the condenser, so it relies on the AC pressure switch as soon as the AC system is turned on, energizes a relay just like the thermostat would, and then it powers the fan that way. That being said, you don't necessarily have to hook this up if you don't have an AC system. And if that's the case, you could just cut it and eliminate these wires completely if you're not planning to run a pressure switch in the near future. So the ground side of the fan is actually pretty simple. You have the battery power for the fan on the blue and black wire, and then you have the black wire for the fan. I've got two spade connectors because that's how my fan is set up. And then if we follow the black wire for the ground, it goes to a ring terminal. That ring terminal, you can just hook it up to chassis ground. And now your fan is permanently grounded. So as soon as you have power to the fan, it automatically has ground. And, and that's pretty much all you need to worry about. This relay harness also has a couple of plugs on it, and this is if you want to run tandem relays for multiple fans, you could just feed off of these wires. 
Uh, you can feed off of the powers and the grounds, and that's three less wires you actually have to worry about. So that's enough complicated stuff. Let's go ahead and actually get this system installed, and I'll show you guys how it works. All right, so I finally got all the wiring done. I even added an extra relay to the one that came with the kit. I ran all the wires. I loomed them all up. I did tape. Uh, right now it's a little messy because I'm still figuring out where the routing is going to be. But as soon as I figure out the routing and clean this up, get rid of all these zip ties. But uh, everything's hooked up. And as a test, you could always disconnect the two plugs on the thermostat. One of them is the one that comes directly off the relay. And one of them is the ground side. The ground side, I hooked them up right here. So if I take the signal side of the relay and I touch it to ground, it should turn the fans on. So there we go. If we touch the other side to ground, nothing should happen. And that's because that's the same wire that's here. So the system works. The only thing that would prevent it from not working is if either the thermostat doesn't work or the thermostat is set up to turn on at too high of a temperature and that would prevent it from working as well. But as for the setup, that's all you need to do. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments down below. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.